Welcome to Financial Services and Bank Marketing in a Pandemic with U.S. Bank and Wells Fargo. My name is Eric Newton. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Milestone, and it is my pleasure to have with me today Brenda Arndt, VP of Content and Search at U.S. Bank, and Brian Wynn, Senior Vice President of Digital Card Acquisition at Wells Fargo. Today's agenda is to start out with a new milestone point of view on Omnichannel. And then Brian's gonna take us in on a fairly, uh, fairly deep dive into his one omni-channel strategy and how they build uh, personas and profiles and how they map the customer journey and the content to it. US Bank and Brenda are gonna tell us about the big pivot they made in marketing uh, uh, around the COVID time in the uh, first couple months of the year and how they put a community and employees first and how important it is for them to use an empathetic branding message and build on what is a consistent part of their, their company identity. And then I'll share with you some new milestone research. Um, all right, so let me start out with this POV. And the POV that I'm gonna share with you is that the internet is a platform everyone uses. So every almost every business is going to have a homepage and a website. This is where we were 15, 20, 25 years ago. This was the basics. Then LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, we find out, are platforms almost everyone uses. So as a business, we have to participate there or we're going to miss communicating with our audience. These are social homepages. So now we've got, we essentially have five homepages if we just count these. Now, YouTube streams more video than Netflix and Facebook combined. So you got to be there also. You need a video presence. So things like this webinar have to be repurposed and shared in that channel because a lot of people, particularly uh, the younger generations, are more inclined to consume video content than uh, traditional text and images. And on you go into Reddit, Quora, SlideShare, Medium, Pinterest, the vertical rating sites that matter in your industry, bankrate.com, uh, Zillow for, for mortgage, Bizarre Voice, Yelp, G2 Crowd, Trust Radius. These are also homepages. So now we're up to 12 or 13 different homepages. These things we think of as channels are actually all distributed versions of your website. Digital content is your website. It's just we think of, we think of them as separate things when in fact they're, they're all interconnected. I'm like what do I mean by interconnected and what does that look like? This is a knowledge graph. And I, I looked for different examples to show you guys. This is a really simple knowledge graph. Uh, looks to me like a Facebook group. It looks to me like a social group with only a, a few dozen people and a couple of activities. Each of the spokes here are some of the popular activities that are clustering on video games and biking. And let me show you what it looks like a little bit more blown up. You can see a little more detail here of, of the knowledge graph. Now, Google indexes all of the content that's visible on the internet and puts it into its knowledge base, which is a giant, it's like, it's something with like 3 billion of these graphs within it, 3 billion facts, the little, the little points, the needle points. And Google's involved in 80% of customer journeys. So what does Google put in the, the knowledge base? Well, uh, let me use a technical term and then I'll explain it. Entities scored by authority. So what's an entity? It's a person, place, or thing that's given meaning and context by facts and links. This is the original premise of Google from 25 years ago, and 20, 25 years ago when they started the company about popularity and context. So then if Google is collecting all this information and so many of the journeys go through there, then Google is the homepage of all your homepages. And this is the publicly available US bank uh, SERPs. And this is, and Wells Fargo has really strong SERPs too, but let me use this one as an example of something that is truly dominant. Um, we've got the knowledge panel, we've got paid, we've got site links, we've got the local three pack. That is the top half of the fold and you can barely get to the first branch. They've got a huge Twitter carousel. They've got Facebook and they've got, they've got this is hard to control. These are people also ask questions that Google controls. And then you go to the second page, they've got YouTube, they've got Twitter again, they've got, there's a Wikipedia entry. And then they've got their mobile site. They've got their mobile distribution on the Google app and the Apple store. This is an incredibly dominant uh, saturation of the SERPs. This is what we recommend all customers try to do. This is why we do content marketing. 
because 80, 65% of the journeys start here in the SERPs, 80 plus percent of the journeys have some, some uh, throughput through these things. Saturating the SERPs is the goal of digital marketing and doing that is thinking about all of these homepages we have to manage together. This is why we care about omni-channel marketing. So how do you do what US Bank did? Now US Bank's been you know, investing heavily in digital marketing for what? Most of 20 years, Brenda, is that about right? Since, since the, really the beginning of the, right. the, the commercial internet. So how do we help Google? How do you do that? Well, you define the entities, you be authoritative and you be popular. So helping Google understand your facts makes it more likely that they'll show your content. Schemas identify and define the entities and the facts uh, Google uses to answer questions from its users. If you think about search, every single search is a question. Every search result is an answer. That's why they call them queries. People are looking, they have a question in their mind. They either type it in a question format or not. But being able to answer questions requires you to the entities to be clear, for you to be a trusted and authoritative source, and for you to be popular and well distributed. This is why there's a lot of demand for people who do what we all do in digital marketing. All right, so your digital content is what represents your entities. We make digital things, like I'm talking about milestone research. That's milestone research is an entity that I'm using to represent milestone as a company, that entity, and that content, and I'm distributing it and repurposing it in multiple forms. That's how I'm helping Google understand the facts that are important to me uh, you know, on the research, which I'll, I'll show you guys after Brenda speaks. So what does omni-channel distribution look like to us? Well, you've got core content like a webinar or a video or an interview or an event. You capture some content or a really good blog or a really good white paper. But you have to be really conscious that you built that asset for the channel, the first channel you launched it into. And it won't work if you just relaunch the same format into a different channel. You got to repurpose it. Maybe it needs to be shorter. Maybe it needs to be pictographic. Maybe it needs to be all of these things you have to, if you're not sensitive and uh, in touch with the channels where you're redistributing this content, these other home pages, you're not formatting for that audience, it won't be well received. And you'll just be doing flat amplification. You have to be doing the adjustment and the amplification for effective omni-channel. And Brian's going to touch a little bit on that in his section. So that's a, that's a prelude and a POV. Uh, at Milestone, we help you organize and amplify your digital information to reach the right audience. We do that with a collection of MarTech software on the left, six, seven products that, that help you get this job done. And omni-channel services on the right, which are traditional digital agency services where depending on how big or small your team is, we add as much service as you need to get the job done. 